the main reason that we're here today is, is first of all, just say thank you. Uh, we've got uh, some wonderful volunteers here at Martha's Table, and they do a great job all year round making sure that uh, folks who are in need are able to get uh, you know, the kind of nutritious meals that uh, are so important to families. And so we very much appreciate them, and we appreciate Martha's Table. You know, we come here usually every Thanksgiving with the whole family uh, to do great work. Uh, but part of the reason I'm here today is because uh, we've got a lot of volunteers here who are furloughed federal workers. Uh, and these are folks who uh, have not been paid, uh, in some cases are very eager to be back on the job, but uh, are not even uh, allowed to work. And yet they're here contributing and giving back to the community. And I think that shows the kind of spirit that we have among all kinds of federal workers all across the country, people who dedicate their lives to public service, think that what they're doing is important in terms of helping this country, and yet find themselves uh, in a situation which, because of politics, they're not able to do their jobs. Now, uh, this week we'll be entering into the third week of a government shutdown that was completely unnecessary. And uh, I'm going to have the opportunity to meet again with the congressional leaders uh, this afternoon. And uh, I am going to, uh, once again, urge them to open the government and make sure that uh, the United States government is paying its bills. Uh, this is fairly simple. And this whole shutdown has been completely unnecessary. Uh, keep in mind that uh, the problem is not that the US government has run out of money. The problem is not that uh, our deficits are going up. Our deficits have actually been cut in half since I came into office and are continuing to go down. Uh, the problem is not that uh, there's not uh, the opportunity for us to work intelligently to come up with a budget that creates long-term fiscal stability while still investing in growth. Uh, the problem is, is that we've seen this brinksmanship as a strategy time and time again uh, to try to extract uh, extreme or partisan concessions. And I think the American people have made very clear that's not how we expect Washington to do business. Uh, there are going to be differences between the parties. There are going to be differences in terms of budget priorities. But we don't need to inflict pain on the American people or risk uh, the possibility that America's full faith and credit is damaged uh, just because one side is not getting its way. Uh, and you know, not only is it untenable for us to continue the shutdown, this week, uh, if we don't start making uh, some real progress uh, both in the House and the Senate, uh, and if Republicans aren't willing to set aside some of their partisan concerns in order to do what's right for the country, uh, we stand uh, a good chance of defaulting. And defaulting would have a potentially devastating effect on our economy, sending interest rates shooting up. Uh, people, whether it's Social Security recipients or people with disabilities or small business people who are vendors to government not getting paid on time, uh, we've already had a damaging effect on our economy because of the shutdown. Uh, that damage would be greatly magnified if uh, we don't make sure that uh, the government's paying its bills, and that has to be decided this week. So uh, my hope is, is that the kind of spirit that is shown by all these outstanding volunteers uh, is going to carry over uh, in the meeting with the leadership uh, this afternoon. They can solve this problem today. And it doesn't mean that the differences between Democrats and Republicans go away. That's what elections are for. But between elections, we're supposed to be governing, and we're not supposed to be hurting uh, the very people who sent us to represent them. And uh, I hope that that kind of spirit uh, holds true during the course of discussions uh, today and uh, over the next uh, several days. Right. Mr. Mr. President, are you confident that a deal can be reached? Are you confident a deal can be reached? Yeah. Look, uh, I think that there is, uh, there's been some progress on the Senate side uh, with uh, Republicans recognizing it's not tenable, it's not uh, uh, smart, it's not good for the American people to let uh, America default. Uh, there's been some progress in recognizing that we're not going to be able to completely bridge the differences between the parties uh, all at once, and so it doesn't make sense in the meantime to try to uh, use uh, a shutdown uh, or the threat of default uh, as leverage in negotiations. Uh, so that's progress. But Obviously, until the details are done, until these folks are back to work so that they can volunteer on weekends during their free time as opposed to uh, when we'd like uh, folks to be on the job, uh, 
you know, I'm going to be, uh, you know, continue to push Congress as hard as I can. Uh, but, but we'll see if we, uh, we'll see this afternoon whether uh, this progress is real. Uh, I think there has been some progress in the Senate. I think uh, House Republicans continue to think that uh, somehow they can extract concessions by keeping uh, the government shut down or uh, by threatening default. And, uh, and my hope is is that uh, the, uh, a spirit of cooperation uh, will move us forward uh, over the next few hours. Are you willing to give?